This is episode 59 with Bruce Hutchin and Whitetail Rendezvous. Welcome to Men of Abundance, the podcast for those looking to level up their lives by hanging out with some of the greatest leaders and established professionals in our community, living a life of integrity, honor, and the abundance mentality. Prepare to pay it forward with your host, former army medic turned lifestyle entrepreneur, Wally Carmichael. Aloha, Men of Abundance, and Happy New Year. This is the first episode of Men of Abundance in 2017. Super, super exciting year. I'm telling you, there is so much stuff going on this year. I have it all written down. Well, most of it. And for the most part, that's my plan. And as I'm sure you know, plans don't always go as planned. (laughs) And to say that's an understatement, right? To say the least. But you know, we we got to make a plan. We have to have something written down. And I talk about this all the time. Put it on your calendar, whatever it is you want to do. Make a plan to make it happen. Now, as I said, there's obstacles that get in the way. Sometimes things don't happen as planned exactly. But ultimately, as long as you're moving in that general direction and learning along the way, as obstacles get in your way. You just have to roll with the punches. You have to be resilient. You have to continue to maintain that abundant mindset. And that's what's ultimately going to get you through it. So let me share a story with you real quick. And this was this is a perfect example of a smaller plan, but a very important plan, important to me anyway. My wife's birthday is January 15th. And I usually do something really big for her because here's the thing. <laughs> In case you didn't already know, my wife is from Panama, from Central America. And Mother's Day in Panama is December 8th. Our wedding anniversary is December 14th. Then, of course, we have Christmas. And then her birthday is January 15th. So, needless to say, my wife makes out pretty darn well this time of year. And I'm always doing crazy things and exciting things for her throughout the year anyway. But this year, my plan was very extravagant. It started out in the morning with breakfast that I made for her, which I normally do anyway, especially on the weekends. And then a massage in the afternoon, early afternoon. And then she had a note in her car for her to arrive at the hotel. And I usually, you know, we do our little staycations down in Waikiki and or somewhere on island. And I had instructions for her to meet me at the hotel and then after the hotel, at the hotel, she would have instructions in her room for three different options of two different restaurants that I had reservations to, or we could just eat there in the room and watch the sunset uh, from the hotel. So none of that went as planned. <laughs> and I'll tell you, the old me would have just been steaming. I would have been upset. I would have probably been upset with her. I would have been upset with the situation. Uh, I would have taken it out on the concierge or the people at the hotel or the rest people at the restaurant and a number of things. But the bottom line is I just rolled with it. The the important thing was for Tracy to have an an amazing day of relaxation and we would experience this together. I did go through some stress, but I didn't let her see it. I didn't let her see that the plan wasn't going as exactly as planned. And I knew from the beginning that the plan was not going to go exactly as planned because I have experience in life in general, and I just know that that stuff happens. I did have some contingency plans in place that kind of helped out a little bit here and there, and I had planned this for quite some time, so I had it all written down. I knew what I was going to do. I rehearsed it in my head multiple times throughout the week and all this stuff. And, And I'm telling you this just because I want you to understand that you're going to make plans, your plans are going to have to change because things are going to happen that are outside of your control. And instead of getting all pissed off about it and just blowing off the rocker, be resilient, stay abundant in your mindset and just know that the end result is what's important. How you get there is not as important. Okay. That's just my philosophy. That's how I manage things. And that's how I keep my heart rate down and (laughs) not get pissed off and take it out on other people. So that's my little message for this morning. One other thing that I want to mention to you is, I don't know if you know this or not, but I know a lot of people have been saying, Wally, we want more of you. I love the guests. I love the conversations, but we want to hear more from you. Well, you can. I do Facebook live videos 
two, three times a week, usually at least two times a week on various topics that are on my mind or something that one of you have brought to my attention and I want to talk on it. So I usually do it Facebook Live. The reason why I do Facebook Live is because my Facebook Live videos automatically post to my blog at menofabundance.com forward slash blog or just click on the blog tab at menofabundance.com. So if you're not on Facebook and you don't catch my live video, you can still go to the blog and comment on those videos because I also, if the content is something that needs to be typed out, I will generally type it out and put that in the blog as well. And it's usually a little bit more detailed than what I mentioned in the video. So if you want to get in on some of that, if you want to catch me live on Facebook, you know, connect with me on Facebook, friend me on Facebook, subscribe so that you get my notifications when I go live and you'll get a notification right to your phone or your or your computer and you'll be able to watch live and make comments. And for you bloggers out there, the cool thing about this technology is when my video automatically posts to Facebook or when my Facebook live video automatically posts to my blog, it also posts the comments. You know why that's important because that's instant SEO juice. That tells Google that that blog is getting some interest. And so Google's going to start sending some traffic over there. Very important. So I appreciate it for those of you who make comments, not because of that, but because I like to have that dialogue. That's why I like Facebook Live, because when I'm doing these videos, like right now I'm doing this podcast, I'm not getting any feedback. I don't know who's listening right now. And right now, nobody's listening because I'm recording this. <laughs> but once this posts, I can see the numbers go up you know, as, as far as downloads and stuff like that. But I don't know who's listening. I don't have any comments. I don't have any feedback. I like that feedback off of Facebook Live. And I like the feedback that I get when I post it to the blog. And you continue to comment on the blog or even you continue to comment in Facebook because those also will continue to load onto Facebook or onto the blog. All right, that's all I have for the comments today. I'm going to have a little bit more after the show, but let's get Bruce out here. This guy is amazing. So Bruce and I met because we are fellow podcasters and him and I are working together and we're keeping each other accountable to a certain extent. And we talk about that in the show. But Bruce has this podcast called White Tail Rendezvous. And when we first got in contact, and what intrigued me, it always intrigues me the titles of some of these podcasts and even the books and stuff that I that I read and listen to. And White Tail Rendezvous, I had an idea of what it was about, and I was confirmed that Bruce hunts whitetail. He hunts deer. He is an avid hunter. And we definitely have that conversation in this episode. But what's so interesting about this is Bruce has taken his passion for hunting whitetail and created a podcast where he has guests on talking about hunting whitetail and all of the different locations, the, the equipment, the planning, everything that could possibly be involved in a hunting excursion anywhere in the world around the United States of hunting whitetail. And he also has conversations about other types of hunting as well. But Bruce has a very interesting background. I mean, this guy built a seven-figure business and then basically lost it all. Now, obviously, I'm not going to get into his whole story here because he's going to talk about that kick in the gut moment. And I'm telling you, it is one heck of a kick in the gut moment. It even affected his marriage. And he gets into that as well. There's a lot of very valuable information of resilience and abundance in this conversation. And I know you're going to love it. Bruce, welcome to Men of Abundance, man. Well, thanks so much for having me here. Yeah, I'm excited to have you. You know, um, let's see, you first got in contact with me asking me to be on your show. And your show is Whitetail Rendezvous. And I listened to a couple episodes. Amazing stuff. I have not actually been out hunting whitetail or anything for that matter since, uh, shoot, I, sent, I think since before I joined the Army 25 plus years ago because I retired a year and a half ago. And I thought to myself, what on earth am I going to be able to provide value to this audience? And we worked it out, man. I was on your show and I had a really good time. And you had some great questions for me, and I think we added a little bit of value to your audience. Well, I, I know you did, and, and in fact, that show is going to be up uh, next week, and I'll give you um, you know, um, the link so you can share it with, with your listeners. But it's amazing how no matter what 
area i'm i'm in the hunting outdoor world and you are um helping people get better at who they are um but we all want to do that no matter uh, what the walk of life we have yeah absolutely and we're going to talk much more about whitetail rendezvous in just a minute but where are you at in the world i live right here in colorado springs colorado nice I have not been down in those parts yet. We had a chance to get stationed there one time when I was in on active duty still, and we chose Hawaii over Colorado. Uh, that was my second time in Hawaii, so we knew what to expect. I just knew I don't want to live in cold weather after living in Germany for three years. Well, it's a surprising because, you know, um, throughout the Midwest right now, it's prime hunting time, and, you know, we've got 70, 80-degree weather, and it's, it's just it, it's a crazy fall weather-wise. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of hunting out here in Hawaii. What they do do is they, they go pig hunting, but they use dogs and knives. They don't use guns. Yeah, I've heard of that. I know some friends that have done that. And then you have some sites, uh, uh, goats over there also that they hunt. Yeah, I had, I, actually, I hadn't heard about that, but that's interesting. Yeah, and some of the, some of the islands, they got large, large populations of goats, and they, uh, they hunt them. Interesting. I'll have to look into that. I hadn't heard about that. So I like to start the show out basically the same way I start out pretty much every morning, which is with an attitude of gratitude. What do you have to be grateful for today, Bruce? I'm grateful for um, simply uh, I just am recovering a week ago. I had surgery uh, on my shoulder, and so I'm starting to mend. So I'm glad that surgery is behind me. Yeah, how'd that go? I remember last we were talking, you were just getting ready to go into surgery. The surgery went fine. I had a torn rotator cuff and a torn bicep and um, too much working out, too much free weights uh, for my age. I'm 70 years old and I was getting ready for a sheep hunt um, back in June and, and, you know, I tore it. And so, um, you know, it's a long uh, uh, rehab process. It's going to be like six months. Yeah, the older we get, the slower we heal. That's for sure. So I'm happy just to be, you know, upright, my shoulders fixed, in six months I'll be as good as new. Wonderful. So before we got started here, as I mentioned to you, I mentioned just a brief bio, a little bit about what we're talking about here in the show, but I'd like to hear it from you. I'd like to hear a little bit more about you. Uh, I'm sure many, many experiences in those 70 plus years, so I'd like to for you to get a little bit more personal right now. Sure, and I guess, you know, the easiest way to start off, uh, I was born in uh, Providence, Rhode Island, lived in a little uh, community in Rhode Island called Foster Center, and um, that's where I, I went to grade school up to eighth grade, and then my life really changed uh, in eighth grade. My father uh, worked for Chrysler Corporation. He got promoted to uh, a regional um, position, and he was moved um, from Rhode Island down to uh, Manhattan. And um, so I went from a town of maybe a thousand uh, people uh, to a high school of over two thousand, and uh, it, it was a hard adjustment. I, I, I can I can say that it was a tremendous adjustment for me because uh, I, I wasn't ready for it. I just wasn't ready for that huge uh, influx of people. Um, and coming from Rhode Island, uh, all sorts of you know Asians and and, and um, different religions and all different types of people, and it was um, you know it it was a struggle. You know, I appreciate you sharing that with me. So I want to dig into that just a little bit. So because I always say we become much better people the more we travel and experience other cultures. So. Over the course of time, and you know, I realized that was a culture shock initially. But what that what did that ultimately do for you as a person, as a man? Well, ultimately, after I got uh, as a freshman, I got five S my first um, quarter or, or semester, or however they did it back then. So I wasn't doing very well. And and the thing I, I would share with people um, when you're really in a in a in a dark place, you're really stuck. I was very fortunate that uh, I'd always been a, a good athlete, even you know as as a freshman, and and so I did get on the football team, and that helped that helped me um, get my feet underneath me as I became a member of a team, and I had a coach that empowered me and uh, to do better and and to, you know to work through things and. What I found is in every single struggle that we have, that there'll be some 
person or it might be a book or it might be a circumstance that'll just flip the switch. I know later in the show you're going to talk about uh, some of these things, but for me, um, what happened is because I got five Fs, I went to get um, this special study or, or special tutoring, if you will, and it was a PhD lady, and I, I wish I could remember her name, but this is way, way 50 years ago, no, 60 years ago. But what she did, she worked with all the gifted and talented or the AP students. They didn't call them that then, but that's what they call them today. And so mm -hmm. um, every every lunchtime, uh, two or three times a week, I would have lunch with her and she would go through and and do testing on me and then, then start working with me. And after about two or three months, she said, you know, you're not an F student. She said, you're recall, you're this, that. And she started bringing me along and started giving me the same curriculum she was working with the AP students. And all of a sudden, I realized I gained confidence. And that was the biggest thing. I had somebody believe in me and somebody helped me along the way. And then I, I broke out of that uh, situation. And then I became part of, of the school and and. Uh, assimilated into you know into my class and and wasn't wasn't shunned and I can remember being bullied they call it bull we call it ranking back then I was being bullied and and stuff like that just because I couldn't I couldn't get it I didn't get it but with a person um, like that uh, like that um, person from Columbia University you know she empowered me that yes I could do it and yes I had the skills and and the ability to not just you know get C's and, and B's but actually be an A student yeah that's interesting how that whole thing played out for you because when I was in high school I was labeled as that kid and put in a special education class and I'm using air quotes over here but that's what it was it was a special education class and of course the way it was set up was everybody knew you was in a special education class there was just no getting around that and I did not like that label uh, and the fact is is it's not that I was, had a learning disability it was just the fact that I did not like the curriculum I was being taught and I was <laughs> to, um, defiant to say the least uh, as a young man and it, it, it only took a matter of two or three weeks in the special education class for the teacher that was teaching that class to realize I did not need to be in that class I just wasn't applying myself on purpose basically in the other classes so I quickly did what I had to do to get out of that class and get back into general population if you would uh, so, but again, at the same time, I was in the in crowd. I was a little bit different than your situation where I was, you know, on the football team, ran track, you know, my girlfriend was the, at the time was the captain of the cheer squad. So I wanted to get out of that environment, but the bullying that happens that happened to you is what I want to focus on be, just because of the label that was on you as far as not being able to excel in that environment and I feel that a lot of schools really kind of foster that it's almost like they it's not that they promote it on purpose it's just the way the system is set up so freshman I came in and then I had my struggles and then uh, played freshman football and then I went out for the track team and and did well in that and so as, as I uh People saw that I was a pretty good athlete and stuff. It it, it just went away. But I had no friends. And, and think about this: you you moved from a, a town, a, a, a grade school, eighth grade that maybe had a hundred kids, you know, to a high school of a couple of thousand. I had I had no friends. I had no net. Um, and that's important for later in life, and we'll get back and, and we'll visit that. But but I had no um, nobody I had my six. And I had to develop that through the people um, in in the sports that I got involved in, and and, and it was hard. It, it really was hard. And at the same time, um, I had to get braces. I mean, so <laughs> so here you are, you know, a, a young man going through puberty and all this stuff. And plus, there were girls in the school. I mean, you know, there were real live girls. And you know, as a freshman and in high school, all of a sudden, there's girls all around. Well, in, in my little town, there were a few girls, and that that was about it. So, there was so many things, you know, happening in my 
in myself and I think uh, sports you know helped me overcome everything it really did yeah and I think it's because of the sports and with the camaraderie with the your classmates and other guys men need that group effort men need that group um, dynamic without a doubt it's been proven time and time again and we can't be in isolation for too long and if we are we're just not really excelling and in order for us to excel and in order for us to feel accepted and be accepted we really need that group environment so that's pretty neat how that dynamic all all worked out for you so i know you've done a lot of things uh throughout your life and you've got amazing things going on at this point but anybody who is excelling in life ultimately ends up having one if not many kick in the gut moments And I describe this kick in the gut moment kind of, you know, like that point in life where you just feel like you're a kick down and the lowest of lows. I would love for you to share one of those stories with us. I'm just I'm trying to sort through uh, which one to (laughs) which one to share, because unfortunately, um, there 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 were uh, a number of I I guess the one the one with the greatest magnitude was later in life. during the dot com era of the later ninety six uh, through two thousand, and uh, I was fortunate or unfortunate um, to be living in San Clemente, California, working for um, a dot com company, and I'd leave San Clemente, fly up to Mountain View or uh, San Jose, and work for three days, and then go back home to San Clemente, and and I was a, a principal with one of the companies up there, and it was called CyberSource, and Anyway, and so because I had surfed and done a lot of action sport, real t- um, action sports, and there's a, a group of people called action sport retailers, and that's the Oakleys of the world, that's the uh, Rip Curls of the world, that's the Reef Sandals of the world. Just think of all the people um, that support the surf industry or the the Southern California lifestyle, and so I I was in that. I have surfed. Uh, uh, from Hawaii all over the United States down in New Mexico and uh, so I had I had a lot of connections and so I was hired uh, to do that to just get bring um, the internet um, bring e-commerce to uh, brick and mortar buildings you know we called it you know from bricks and mortar to, to bricks and clicks and uh, I did that and and it was really fun and I made a ton of money and my net worth was in seven figures and then uh, as we know um, that all just poofed and, w- and went away well when that went away I, I didn't handle that well and so I ended up in um, in 30 days inpatient um, in rehab and um, and I lost everything my wife we sold the house and did everything my wife after I came out she said you know, go find. I want to find the guy I fell in love with in college because you're not him. And so we separated from, from the mountains in Colorado. So I basically moved in with those guys and uh, the Pike family out of Gunnison, Colorado. And um, they helped me get back on my feet. And I worked for them for a while. And then about 18 months later I we got reconciled and that was hard because I make a lot of money I could do anything I wanted to do and uh, unfortunately I did it and so I ended up $150,000 in debt and I had to pay all that back it, it, it just it, it was a tremendous ride and I sometimes think I, I don't know why I'm still alive and, and but I do know why I'm still alive because God wasn't done with me yet well yeah that's <laughs> Every time I ask that question, I, I'm just sitting on the edge of my seat to wait for what kind of story I'm going to get from it because I don't always know all the backgrounds that deep uh, with everybody that I talk to on Men of Abundance. It, that, that, that's definitely a kick in the gut moment. So how did what was the enough is enough? What, at what point were you able to make that pivot point and turn all that around? Well, I realized that um, money didn't define me and there's a lot of people say oh if i'm if i'm you know worth seven figures then everything will be right it has no bearing and, and at seven years old when people come out oh I, i'm fighting this money i said money has nothing to do with it they look at me cross-eyed and said the money's there you're just not being who you need to be you're not doing what you need to do and so the money's not going to come to you because you don't deserve it and i and i believe that because 
all of us can make a lot of money, but if, if you're in the wrong segment for you, and if your whole thrust is just to make money, then uh, you're not going to be the happy person, or you're not going to be the person that you recre were created to be. And I firmly believe that, because even though I lost a whole bunch of money, I had separated from my wife, then we came back, um, and restored our marriage just past June. We just celebrated 46 years of marriage. Um, and yeah, I'm retired and I, I worked hard at the dot com industry. I worked hard and, you know, I retired at age 60, 65. And, you know, I don't have a lot of zeros in my bank account, but we, we live comfortably. But the biggest thing is if you concern yourself with the money, you're not going to get what you think you're going to get when you finally get there. And I, I talk to people all the time about the place called there because you never get there. Mm -hmm. You think, oh, once I get there, once once I get that um, truck, car, once I get that promotion, once I get um, that house, once I get whatever it is, it's going to change you. No, that's just part of the journey. And folks, we're all on a journey, and there's going to be bumps and bruises. And I love sitting with people that have been had the bumps and bruises, because if you haven't been tossed up or had the kick in the gut or flipped upside down, then you don't know the real you yet. And I firmly believe that. I really believe that you really get get knocked down, and it's how you get back up and what you do after that fact that really defines you. Yeah, you said a mouthful there, and it, I really couldn't repeat, or I really couldn't add to any of that because it was just a mouthful. I mean, it's absolutely correct, everything you said. I don't believe in failure at all. There's no such thing as failure. It's always a learning process. Uh, you, what you, what most people call failure, I call an education, and we just have to go through those. And you find me anybody who's never failed, I'm gonna, I'll point you to somebody who hasn't done anything in life and probably won't do anything in life. And that's okay if that's all right with that person, if that's what that person wants. But men of abundance, I know you're listening to this because you want to move forward in your life. You want to live a life of abundance. And I'm here to tell you, do not try to avoid the failures. If you're avoiding the failures, you're avoiding success. So I love everything that you said right there, Bruce. So Whitetail Rendezvous. Where did this come about? I absolutely love the show. I've listened to a couple episodes. I have not been, as I said at the beginning of the show, I have not been out hunting in many years. But when I do listen to the show, it takes me back to my childhood. Uh, I think my first, the first rifle I ever fired was a double-barreled 12-gauge shotgun. I was propped up against a tree. I think I was like maybe seven or eight. And then I got into shooting my uncle's uh, .30 out six and you know, just been around weapons my entire life. Uh, so I, I really enjoy listening to the show, but how did all that come about? Well, I've been hunting actually um, this fall, um, 2016. It's the 50th year I've been hunting whitetails. I started in 1966 when I went to the University of Wisconsin Lacrosse, and uh, I, I worked. I paid my wife through school, so I worked many jobs and uh, going through school, and I was a bartender for this gentleman named dick rogers and he said hutch that's what they call me hutch uh, you're not going home for christmas because they knew i lived in new york and i was out in wisconsin so he said he said why don't you come to our house for thanksgiving and we'll go whitetail hunting i said what's whitetail hunting he said well we'll shoot deer and i had read some sporting magazines oh a deer we're going deer hunting okay fine and so i did that and i went to his family farm and if you've never hunted out it, it, listeners you haven't hunted forget about the killing part it's the family part so I went to a small town in Wisconsin everybody knows everybody everybody's basically related and it took me back to Foster Center Rhode Island because they're same size towns and what it is it's a tradition the hunting is a tradition that has been shared year after year like Dick Rogers and I have shared it for 50 years. That's a long time to share anything. And there's joyful times and sorrowful times, but you're you're in the adventure um, with a whole bunch of people. They have a common goal, but they share. And yeah, you go out and you hunt, and get a deer, but then you come back and you, you're playing cards and you, and 
the the mothers are, are are cooking and they have great meals and you know there's kids all over the place and and, and it's just a simple way of life and it's the tradition of this handing down of stories. I can remember Harry Shearer, who's, who's passed on. He started telling me uh, about hunting out west. And I go, hunting out west? Yeah, it's deer and elk and all this stuff. And and Harry got me started um, hunting out west. And because I met these people for 50 years, I still have the relationship. And in, in the show today, uh, Harry's son and grandson are on, on today's show. Um Garrett uh, Shear shot a 180 buck and I had him on the show so hey I know you're not going to be hearing this but check just google Garrett Shear Garrett and Jim Shear uh, 180 um, on Whitetail Rendezvous and listen to that story because Jim talks about the hunting tradition and uh, and the fabric that it wove through for his whole family so who is your audience specifically I, I of course I get that they would be you know, hunters and folks that want to get into whitetail hunting, or is it any other type of hunting? And what do you talk about specifically on the show? Well, um, whitetails are in probably uh, 40 some states, probably more than that, but let's say huntable populations 38 to 40 states. And there's 17 million people at any one time during the hunting season will be hunting whitetails. And it's a, it's a 37 billion dollar industry the outdoor industry is 37 billion uh, just for instance bass pro shops just paid 5.5 billion dollars uh, to buy cabela's huge wow, industry and so and so you have women you have kids you have old people you have people that are uh disabled um you have all these people that go out and sit in stands or they'll they'll uh, spot and stalk a lot of different ways to hunt whitetails but they're hunting whitetails one because they're really fun to hunt because they're smart and they taste great and and if you're into uh, the trophy part of it they make gorgeous trophies uh, for your cabin or, or for your office or whatever so it's it's a whole industry that that thrives and people can hunt whitetail that couldn't hunt elk because to hunt elk you have to travel sheep hunting is ungodly expensive we're talking 30 40 50 thousand dollars to go sheep hunting or you go to africa but everybody who has 10 acres five acres my buddy just shot a buck he's got seven acres and he shot a buck the other night on his seven acres so it doesn't take a lot of land to do it plus you're out there and you're in nature you're you're matching with wits with a with a critter so you put all this together plus the tradition of hunting and all of a sudden you get something and if you go on Facebook now uh, you know people are showing their their photos with their their doe that they shot or their son's first buck or the daughter's first buck and they're sharing the experience uh, of the tradition of hunting and so it's a huge audience men women kids and the women today are the fastest growing segment in the outdoor industries because women are just killing it they're just saying hey i'm not going to wait around for somebody to invite me i'm going to figure it out and i'm going to grow and i'll give a shout out to uh proas uh, kirsty pike ceo of proas about eight ten years ago she started an apparel company for women uh only because all the apparel companies were just making um uh handoffs of they take a men's um clothing and they just um size it down if you will she started from the ground up and made uh clothing of hunting apparel so it would fit women because they're shaped different than guys and so she did that so you take a lady in gunnison colorado and that had an idea and now she has a multi-million dollar company in the apparel business that's really interesting, and the thing that I want to point out about that in reference to men of abundance is, guys, I'm telling you all the time that there are so many different ways to make money out there. There are so many vocations, and it's not always about the money. It's about what the lifestyle that you create through your vocation, and you know, if you want to go out and be a forest ranger, forest rangers don't get paid very much in most, most places, but they're out in the wilderness. They're doing the things that they love. They're protecting the environment, and they're doing amazing things. And they love what they're doing. Bruce is here, got a podcast, talking about something he's extremely passionate about. 
and he's you know getting sponsors and he's talking about all these products he's talking about all these techniques and he's talking to other amazing guys who have been doing you know been hunting longer than he has and you know in different locations of the world than he has and he's having a blast doing it and that's why I brought Bruce on because he is truly an abundant leader leading his life of abundance and I absolutely love that I just love when I run into guys who are doing uh, what they want to do and and on top of that you know getting paid for it or working on getting paid for it i think it's beautiful no it's exciting and uh, a while back you say how did i get into it um 2014 i came i came back to colorado from the midwest after hunting for a month and my buddy here said hey you know you're going to start a podcast okay that was in january of 2015 and i had no idea what the podcast was folks and so uh, you know, um, if they build it, you know, if you build it, they'll come. Well, we've had over 86,000 downloads since August uh, of 2015. And nobody knows me. Nobody knows me. I'm so far below the radar. I don't do a lot of advertising. It's all uh, organic growth. But I do it because just like now and in, in talking with, uh, with Wally, I'm passionate about uh, seeing people be successful. And, and, and if there's any way that I can help a person be successful as a whitetail hunter, I'm going to do it. And I collect all this information, all this content, and then I share it with people. So they say, hey, Bruce has become an influencer in the outdoor industry. And that's one of my goals is to help people be successful. And no matter you know who they are, they can be successful doing this because if you're successful as a hunter and you you hunt whitetails and you're able to, to harvest a whitetail and bring it home and eat it, then you've done something very special. And if you don't hunt, you wouldn't get it. But if you do that, because then you said, hey, I've been able to feed my family. One, I match woods with a critter and I won. And then there's a downstream benefit of showing your kids how they can be resourceful. Yeah, that's really cool. And the other thing that I want to point out in reference specifically to podcasting is I would have never imagined there would have been a podcast out there of somebody in the hunting industry, let alone niche down specifically to whitetail. But guys, if you're getting ready to go on a an extended trip, like an RV trip or something like that, people want to see you do that. And then people also want to sponsor you along doing that as well. You can start a podcast uh, you can even do it on YouTube, and you can you can use the audio from the YouTube video or from the Vimeo video and post that on a podcast. There are so many things you can do if you're a runner, if you're a bowler, a golfer. I mean, you name it. You can come up with something to talk about, and if it's passion, if it's something that you're passionate about, you can put that out there. And I just think it's amazing this this platform is the best way to uh, share this type of information, and it stays there forever. It, it's really cool stuff. So, Bruce, at this point of the show, we are going to pay it forward to Men of Abundance. Are you ready for that? Yes, sir. Outstanding. So, give Men of Abundance one to three actionable steps that they can take today. The biggest thing um, I would say, if you're not reading, if you're not reading books about what you want to do, um, then you're missing out. And uh, you, you just be, got to become a reader. And if you're not going to become a reader, about getting better as as a person. Um, if if you want to find out about uh, God, read the Bible. If you want to find out about podcasting, uh, pick up and listen to John Lee Dumas or Pat, Pat Flynn's podcast. Anything you want to do and get better at, you have to find people that are successful doing that. Once you find that and once you start immersing yourself in what they're teaching you and accept the teacher, you've got to be coachable. If you're not coachable, then you're your biggest enemy, period. And I'm just looking at my library, you know, uh, good to great, uh, disruptive class, career pathways, uh, exceptional selling, uh, how to discover your strengths, spin selling, um, the answer. Um, why people don't ask the Aladdin factor I love that book the Aladdin factor and it's about why people don't ask for what they want think about that Wally why wouldn't somebody who really wants an ice cream why wouldn't they ask their parents for an ice cream yeah that's a very good point you know it takes me to the I don't know if it's a quote or a saying or whatever but the bottom line is this 
I don't know if you're going to get whatever it is you ask for, but I can guarantee this. You won't if you don't ask. That's right. And and going back to a kid, why won't they ask their parents? Because their parents have said no so many times. They're just tired of it. And <laughs> they lose the point. courage. Or or they don't think they deserve it. Every and, and times I wake up and... I don't deserve the life I'm living. Sometimes I think that. I go, wait a minute. I've earned I've earned the right to do the things I've done. I've earned the right to be a very successful, have the fastest growing whitetail podcast in North America. I've earned that right. Why? Because I work darn hard, really hard. But, you know, and I think of, I think a couple of books um, uh, blink, and I'm just going to grab that. I'm going to grab that book if I can. Hopefully I don't bump off here. Yeah, there's three, three books. Um, the Tipping Point by Malcolm Cadwell. And if you're going to get into business, if you're going to do anything for yourself, you have to find the tipping point. You have to find that place that if you do X amount of work, that effort, all of a sudden it's the visualization is you're pushing a snowball up the hill, you hit the crested hill and snowball starts going down the other point well that was the tipping point as soon as that snowball starts to roll down the hill you cannot stop that you cannot stop that you can't run the other side no 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 stop you can't do it so be prepared for success and well all the we need to come back and talk about that and then the other thing is blink um by malcolm uh caldwell and blink is everything that you know so if you were um a person that um uh, made pizza so you could look at a pizza any place in the world and realize was that a good pizza or a bad pizza you know that in less than 10 seconds probably five seconds because you look at it. in the book blink it talks about uh, this art criti critic um, that was called in uh, to look at a piece of art and he looked at it for five seconds he said that's a phony and these people, the insurance companies and everything, and it's in the book, it's a great story. They said, how did you know? Because he said it didn't look right. Excuse me? But that's what <laughs> Blink is. It's, it's our brain is so powerful that he had immersed himself in the art forever. He was world-renowned. That's why the insurance team called him in and asked him to appraise his painting. And, and he could look at it in a second and say it didn't look right. What do you mean? And then he tore it apart with the brush strokes and the, and, and the weight of the canvas, uh, everything for that period, everything that you want. On, he tore it down, but he, it took him five seconds to say it doesn't look right. And so when you look at a situation, I think all of us will do this. If we're really good at something, you look at a situation and said that isn't right. It doesn't look right. Something's wrong. And it, innately we know that. Now can we back that up with quantum? information yes we better or people are going to look well okay tell me why it doesn't look right so you got to take it apart but those two books um, help me a lot in, in business and what I'm doing because I'm trying to get to the tipping point as John Lee Dumas Pat Flynn and others have ha have reached in the podcast industry because they did the work they get to a point then they went over to the tipping point now they're just going and the business will thrive with or without them key point with or without them. They could sell their business, but the business is built so it'll have sustainability. And the third book, uh, Jay Baer, B-A-E-R, called Utility, Why Smart Marketing is About Help, Not Hype. And it really throws in the face of, you know, you see marketing, 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 buy this, buy this, buy this. But today, people want to figure out how can you help me build something? How can you help me be a better deer hunter? How can you help me, like men in abundance, be a better man? Okay, how can you do that? Then once Wally and I figure out how we can help you do that, then we bring value to you, then we will make some money. And if we do it right, we'll make a lot of money. If we don't do it right, we won't make a lot of money. But again, money isn't the object. We're doing this, Wally and I are doing this, having this conversation to help you understand your God-given potential. And, you know, Tony Robbins talks about the giant within, and he, Tony Robbins has been very successful. Everybody knows about Tony Robbins. Well, he was a train wreck when he started, if you, hear, if you know his story. And now he's well thought of and, and well spoken of uh, throughout the world.
But he started just like you and I. He was a train wreck. Go read his story. Not just the story today, but when he started. And you'll see we all come from someplace. And the exciting thing that Wally and I have the opportunity to do just with this, we don't know how many thousands of people are going to listen to this, but we're going to ignite. And John Lee Dumas talks about that all the time, ignite. Um, because we want to ignite something within you to say, wait a minute, if those guys could do it. If that kid who flunked out of uh, first, uh, um, you know, freshman grade uh, could do it and turn himself into something, well, I've got more game than he does. And you're right. You have more game than I did. So we're trying to empower you to get off your duff, go fail a bunch. I mean, really fail. Just go <laughs> really fail a bunch. Because through your failure, you realize, oops, wait a minute, this is who I am, I build my character, I'm a man of integrity, and I'm going to go out and be successful. Why? Because I know I can. Exactly. You're spot on. And you bring up John Lee Dumas and Pat Flynn quite a bit, and I want to point out to Men of Abundance, the reason why he's doing that is because both of us were mentored indirectly through a, through um, both of their courses. Uh, Pat Flynn and John Lee Dumas both have a free podcast course, and they both have, well, John has a paid community that both of us are subscribed to, and we get a lot of value out of that, and we both know the value of having a coach. We can have all the information we we need, but ultimately, the way I've personally been able to move forward and truly achieve the things that I've wanted to achieve in life was with a coach or a mentor or both, and somebody to hold me accountable. All of these elements are absolutely, and as far as I'm concerned, absolutely required in my experience and seeing my in my own experience, as well as seeing other people's experiences and coaching other people. So find somebody who you can resonate with, who you can relate to, and if they have a course, if they're willing to coach you, do whatever it takes to get them on your in, in your corner. So, what daily habits make up the biggest impact in your life, Bruce? Um, daily habits, I, I work way too hard. I've had people tell me that because um, I focus, because I publish everything about Whitetail Roundabout. I do the whole show. So I find the people that get on the show. I do the interviews. Then I do all uh, the post-production, and then I do the production. And so I, I have to do that. So uh, my workflow, basically, it's 6.30, 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning, just depends like with my shoulder, it's been at eight o'clock. Usually, I'm doing it by by six six o'clock. I will make you tired if I told you every single thing I did just to get my show for that day up on social media. I have over thirty thousand followers on social media, so I reach out to all of them, and so I have a workflow and I keep track of it on Trillo, blah blah blah. But what I do, I do it over and over and over and over. Since um, August 31st, every single day I produce a show, except Saturdays and Sundays. I did was doing it six days a week. Now I only do it five days a week. So think about that. The thousands of hours I've invested, and I haven't made a dime yet. Why? Because I haven't monetized it in the shape that somebody like a Realtree or a Bass Pro Shop um, – we're talking real money here, folks, because John L. Dumas, Pat Flynn, it, you just look at the top 10 earners in the podcast world and you'll just go, no, that's stupid money. Well, it isn't because they've earned it. And so what I do, I follow the same track every single day for the last you know, 18 months. I don't quit until I've done that. If I'm sick, I, ha I had my hip replaced. Um, I, now I have my shoulder replaced, but I'm still doing the same work. I do it, albeit I do it slower. So I know my workflow, and, and so my workflow drives what I'm doing, and that collected body of work will get me to the tipping point. And building a podcast by yourself uh, is hard. But one thing I'm gonna I'm gonna give a shout out right now for Wally and I and Wally and I had talked about it when we talked oh, a couple of weeks ago. Wally and I both are available for for um, consulting, member, uh, mentorship, whatever you want. You can reach out to me at whitetailrendezvous at gmail .com or Wally. What's your what's your uh, email? Yeah, Wally at menofabundance dot com. Yeah, and and Wally and I have talked about this, but if you're just thinking about this, I would talk to you for an hour, no cost at all. Well, I'd do the same thing, no cost at all, that we would we would listen to what you're 
things are. Give you some advice, and that's it. And if you would choose to engage with either of us, then we'll, we'll discuss that. But you need, I, I feel that everybody needs somebody to believe in them. Okay, Wally and I come from different backgrounds, but we met and we're, we're working this thing through together because we believe one in each other. We believe that helping each other is important. And if we can help another group of people, a number of people, it, Probably, in my case, probably not more than five people a month I could work with. And I don't know what Wally says. But having said that, we'll be willing to do that because this has made such a change in my life because I have passion at age 70. When other people are thinking about whatever, I'm building something for myself, for my friends, and for my family, and I'm making a difference. And once you realize you're making a difference in some other person's life, it, it empowers you more. Wally, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I can completely relate to that. My day started at 4.30 this morning. I had some stuff to finish up with a couple episodes. I had some social media, some emails to get to. Uh, got out the door, you know, and go to work. My wife and we, you know, I'll work all day. We'll do some stuff. Um, and matter of fact, this evening we're going to see Sting in concert. Uh, at the time of this recording, it's November 4th, so we're going to see Sting in concert. And, you know, just always busy, but I am absolutely, and that's exactly the number I'm willing to take on five people uh, to mentor, either in podcasting or to live your life of abundance. And that's the point that I'm at now. So, yeah, I absolutely agree with everything you just said. So, I got one more question for you, Bruce, before we close up here, and that is, what does living a life of abundance mean to you? Hey, man, listen. Now, I know that you've heard the term leaders are readers, but here's the thing. Leaders are also listeners. As you're listening to this podcast, I know you like to listen to your content. I know you like to listen to amazing men and women. So I'm going to offer you a free audio book. Well, not me, but Audible is going to offer you a free audio book. And I highly, highly recommend listening to audio books as well as this amazing podcast and others. Now, obviously, I don't have to convince you that listening to amazing content is important. And you've heard all of the amazing books that have been recommended on this show. These men and women aren't just recommending these books just for the hell of it. They are recommending these books because it's amazing, amazing content. And if you're like me and you don't have the time to read all the time and you just want to listen to an audio book on your commute while you're working out, doing whatever it is that you do throughout the day, I highly recommend you get an audiobook from Audible. Now, since I recently partnered with Audible, they're going to give you a free 30-day trial and a free audiobook along with that 30-day trial. On top of that, you are going to be helping men of abundance keep the mic on. That's right, because when you sign up for your free 30-day trial and get your free book, Audible gives a kickback to men of abundance, which helps us keep the mic on. So as soon as you get a chance, either go to moa-book.com or go to menofabundance.com on the podcast tab and you will see the download a free audio book today image on the left side of the screen. Click on that. Go ahead and get signed up for your free 30-day trial and get your free book and help Men of Abundance keep the mic on. All right, let's get back to the show. Living in life of abundance is having the ability when a person asks you for help you can meet that need no matter what that need is and that's an abundant life because you can give away yourself because everybody out there you know that sometimes we turn into takers when I was in rehab I was taken because I was in a bad place so I took 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 I couldn't I couldn't add to the people had to rebuild me basically but now and you look at you look at people who are successful, and I've had some really neat people on my show that are well known in my industry, and they're willing to give. They just want to give. Hey, Bruce, I'd be glad to have have on your show. Just just call me, and let me know, and and all of a sudden you have people who are extremely successful giving back to their industry. Well, a person of abundance can meet the needs of a person, whatever that need is. And you reach that point, then you 
really as an individual you've reached a point that you really can make a difference and i've said that a number of times my last 20 i get 20 years left um i want i want to make a difference in one life or 100 lives i don't know what that count is but if i can make a difference a positive impact of somebody's life then that's success that's abundance that's limiting in abundance because you're you're helping you're impacting you're you're making a positive outcome out of something that may be negative excellent so we're going to close this up and you already mentioned once how we can reach you and get in contact with you but go ahead and give it to us one more time sure you can get me on facebook at whitetail rendezvous um you can get me on instagram whitetail rendezvous you can get me on um uh Twitter at Whitetail Rendezvous, and you can reach me at my website at uh, whitetailrendezvous.com, and my email is whitetailrendezvous at gmail.com. Excellent. I will have all of those links along with the books that you mentioned in the show notes of this episode at menofabundance.com. Just search Bruce in the search bar. This episode will pop right up. And, uh, you know, the cool thing about my show notes is I have those timestamps there so that if you heard anything in the episode that you want to go directly to, look for it in the show notes, click on the timestamp, it will time travel you directly to that point of interest and you'll be able to listen to that and you can even clamor it. If you don't know what that is, check out the clamor button on that page as well. Bruce has been a wonderful uh, conversation. It's been an honor talking with you again and, um, As you said, as you mentioned to Men of Abundance, we are accountability partners holding each other accountable to our goals and aspirations with our podcast and everything else we have going on in life for that matter. And I truly appreciate your friendship, man. Hey, it's been been great and I can't wait to see where we're going. (laughs) I know. I I envision it, but um, I can't wait for it to come to fruition. All right. Take care, man. Have a good day. You too. All right, Abundant Leaders. I know you got a lot out of that conversation. I certainly did. And I've had the opportunity to listen to it a couple times because there is some really good stuff in this conversation. If you loved it as much as I did, do all of your friends and connections a very big favor by sharing this episode with them. You can do that right from the website, right from menofabundance.com. Just click on Facebook, click on the Twitter feed, any of that right underneath the episode. And you can share that episode with everybody in your social media or just tell somebody about it. Go old school. Ask them, have you listened to Men of Abundance? Take their phone, open up their podcast app, and subscribe them to Men of Abundance right there. Most people don't know how to do that. That's the exciting thing. You're going to share something brand new with them, and they're going to love you for it. All right, go out and live your life of abundance, and make sure to pay it forward. That's all for today, Abundance Leaders. For more about our guests and the powerful information we shared with you today, be sure to sign up for our mailing list at menofabundance.com. We appreciate your time and look forward to hanging out with you on our next episode. So until then, be sure to pay it forward and live your life of abundance.